So I'm going to bring in our next two guests. Michael Tracy is an independent journalist. Aaron Good is a political scientist and historian, the host of American Exception podcast, and the author of American Exception, Empire, and the Deep State. So welcome, Aaron and Michael. I thought we could start, obviously, uh, it goes without say that people probably know this, that someone named RFK Jr. is running for president. And uh, through his running for office, uh, a discourse about his uncle, JFK, has been kind of reintroduced. Well, he he introduced it. It's not just that it happened to be reintroduced. He's leveraging that to enliven his current campaign. That's the only reason it's being discussed at the moment. Sure. Okay. So he's, he's bringing it up, but I I think it's not inconceivable that it would be brought up by other people. Sure. Just not in the same way, probably that he's been doing that. So I thought we could start off by watching just two short clips of um, RFK Jr. uh, Talking about his, uh, his uncle JFK. And the first one he's asked um, was the CIA involved in murdering JFK. So let's hear what he has to say. I believe they murdered or were involved in the murder of your uncle. What would have you come to personally? The CIA, yes, they were definitely involved in the murder and the, you know, and the six-year cover-up. They're still not releasing the, you know, the papers that legally they have to release. Um, but I don't think there's any doubt if you look at this huge, you know, mountain, monumental mountain of evidence and confessions, and you know, so many people have confessed to their involvement, and for anybody who has doubts about that. I would recommend a book by Jim Douglas called The Unspeakable, because I think he's done a better job uh, than anybody else at kind of assembling and distilling all of the millions and millions of documents that uh, have been released over the past 50 years. And these things, these revelations are released incrementally, and so nobody really takes notice of them. But when you put them all together, the story is very clear. Okay, and now let's watch another clip from uh, Fox. Let's see what he has to say here. There are confessions of people who were directly involved in the plot, who were involved in the planning of the plot, uh, who were peripheral to the plot. Uh, there's a 60-year cover-up. The, you know, the Warren Commission was run by Alan Dulles, who was the head of the CIA, who my uncle fired. And then insinuated himself onto the Warren Commission and essentially ran the Warren Commission and kept this evidence from the Warren Commissioners. By the way, when Congress, 10 years later, investigated the crime with much more evidence than the Warren Commission had at its disposal, Congress found that, yeah, it was a plot. It was a conspiracy. There were multiple people involved. And most of the people in that investigation believe that it was the CIA that was behind it because the evidence was so oh. overwhelming to them. Uh, the, the by mad- the way, father, when he investigated Jack Ruby, he found out that Jack Ruby had been deeply involved with Carlos Marcella's mob, with, with uh, Sam Giancata, and all the people who were all of those mob leaders, Santos Traficante, who were the Havana casino owners who had been recruited by the CIA in the Castro murder plot. So they were all working together in cahoots with the CIA. By the way, the day that my uncle was killed, I was picked up at Sidwell Friends School and brought home the first phone call that my father made after J. Edgar Hoover told him that his brother had been shot was to the CIA desk officer in Langley, who was only a mile from our house. Yeah. And... And, and my father said to him, did your people do this? His next call was to Harry Ruiz, who was one of the Cuban uh, Bay of Pigs leaders who had remained very, very close to our family and to my father. My father asked him the same question. Then my father called John McComb, who was the head of the CIA, and asked him to come to the house. McComb came over, and when I came home from Sidwell Friends School, My father was walking in the yard with John McComb, and my father was posing the same question to him. Was it our people who did this to my brother? So it was my father's first instinct that the agency had killed his brother. It was my father's first instinct that the agency had buried uh, his brother. So there's a lot to debate here, like who killed JFK, RFK as a candidate. But I thought we could start somewhere... uh, 
that, Michael, you kind of started here. You tweeted something out kind of sarcastically. So Michael writes, wow, I just found this footage of JFK saying in September 1963 that he's going to withdraw from Vietnam. This is why they killed him only two months later, three exclamation points. And now let's play this footage. These people who say that uh, we ought to withdraw from Vietnam are wholly wrong, because if we withdrew from Vietnam, the communists would control Vietnam. Pretty soon, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Malaya would go, and all of Southeast Asia would be under the control of the communists and under the domination of the Chinese. And then India, Burma would be the next target. So I think we should stay. We should make it clear, as Ambassador Lodge is now making it clear, while we want to help, we don't see a successful ending to this war unless the people will support it, and the people will not support the effort if uh, the government continues to follow the policy of the past two months. I hope that will be clear to the government. should be. After all, they've been conducting this struggle for 10 years, and uh, I admire what the president has done. He's been counted out a number of times. I'm hopeful that he will come to see that the uh, they have to reestablish their relationship. Okay. Can I just so, give a, a comment on that real quick? Yeah. Okay. So clearly that was intended to be a sarcastic yeah. remark uh, on my part in that he's saying the diametric opposite of a pledge to withdraw from Vietnam. And even so, I was inundated with people who were convinced that it was evidence of what they had long assumed and what is now being reinforced to them through the vehicle of this strange RFK Jr. quasi-presidential campaign, which is that uh, Eureka bombshell evidence that JFK was on the verge of withdrawing from Vietnam, even though he's saying the exact opposite. Because So the interpretive frame that's being kind of popularized here, it had been in the past, but now has like this different tinge to it with a different sort of ideological valence given this RFK campaign, is such that Every piece of evidence, every data point that is unearthed is actually evidence for this theory of, R of RFK Jr. carrying forth the mantle of the Kennedy dynasty being this uh, bulwark against the deep state. And so they interpret everything through that lens. And, and they, so they can come away with the exact opposite conclusion of what JFK in plain English is actually articulating there. What say ye, Aaron Good? Yeah, uh, there's plenty of people around Kennedy who were saying that he was withdrawing from Vietnam. Uh, I think the clearest encapsulation of the policy was from Kenny O'Donnell, who was a close confidant of JFK. And he said that uh, JFK told him that they were going to withdraw in after the election, that if he withdrew now, there would be another red scare. So he couldn't do anything until after the election. But that was what he told Kenny O'Donnell he was going to do. Anish additionally, you have pretty much everyone around him in the top of the national security state uh, saying that Kennedy was withdrawing from Vietnam. His defense secretary, Robert McNamara, who not only was saying that this was what was happening, but he wrote a memoir about it after the Oliver Stone movie, which used John Newman's JFK in Vietnam as a resource. Uh, he's a historian who wrote his dissertation on JFK in Vietnam. Uh, this prompted McNamara to go ahead and tell the story about how they were uh, maneuvering to withdraw from Vietnam after the election. And it basically confirmed what Oliver Stone put in his movie. So you have Robert McNamara saying it, but that's testifying against interest. He would have known. And he was it's pretty damning because he prosecuted the war under LBJ. You have Max Taylor from the JCS, head of the JCS. He said he was pulling out Arthur Schlesinger. Uh, even McGeorge Bundy in the 2000s, he, does, he is near death and he's working on a memoir with this guy named uh, Goldstein. And he finds, looking at the documentary evidence that was shown to him, that he, he realizes for the first time that not only was Kennedy withdrawing from Vietnam, but he was withdrawing from Vietnam in a way that kept him, McGeorge Bundy, the national security advisor, out of the loop. So Kennedy knew that the Cold War insanity at the time, and even within his own administration, was such that coming out and just saying, I'm withdrawing from Vietnam is impossible. So he, he was lying in, there. But he put it, he was dissembling. The Cold War was foisted by Wall Street people who during World War II planned it, that this was going to be, you know, that the U.S. was going to go for empire. A few years later, they more or less lay out the Cold War. And by the time Kennedy takes office, this is established. The Cold War is just the, the reality that everybody has to exist in. So everybody has to seem 
very tough. There's no way you could be elected if you weren't accepting the general tenets of the Cold War. So that's what JFK had to accept. He did have to dissemble and or, you know, obfuscate some of his intentions at different times for political reasons, because otherwise he wouldn't get reelected or elected in the first place. So was he perfectly honest at all times? No. But if he was, would he have had any chance to get into the White House in 1960? No. OK, well, I mean, this theory, which is not generally based on hard, tangible evidence, but rather um, after the fact, speculation and wishful thinking as to what would have been done if this timeline had gone in a different direction, um, it has to presuppose that everything in the evidentiary record that's actually based on Kennedy's own statements or his own actions, it was just this elaborate ruse. So. JFK had to have been a chronic liar in order for this alternate theory to have any credibility whatsoever. So if the if the argument is that Kennedy was a chronic liar, okay, I mean, that would seem to cut against this notion of him being this um, savior-like figure. 